comics bring me back to the days when I was a kid. Um, I love to read books. I read a lot of books. My, my grandmother taught me how to read very early on when I was about four or five. So I read books, but the thing with comics is that they were quicker and easier to read. You could trade them for other comics. They made you a superhero. They allowed you to escape, to fantasize. Um, and it was, uh, it was a social, actually, vehicle as well, because it put me in contact with other kids that were also in the same sort of frame of mind that I was and, and had the same sort of expectations and dreams that, that, that I had. But the thing when it comes, and also they were cheap. You know, you could buy a comic book. I mean, books were something you would get for birth, for your birthday. But you, know, you could buy, there was a place in Panama where they sold uh, secondhand comics. So you could get like two for five cents, you know, so. But the thing is, it, it, it was a social, it was a social dynamic and play a, a, as well, because you traded with other kids and made new friends, established connections. But most, most importantly, I think comics just bring you back to a time when things weren't as difficult as they are now, when you're an, an adult. Well, the fun, the fun memory that I have is that just uh, being able to find a book that I, 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 I thought I was not going to get. Sometimes you would hear, oh, there's a comic book about this, or a comic book about that. But people who had comic books didn't lend them most of the time. So if, if you did get to find a book that was something that you wanted to have and you didn't think you were going to get your hands on, that was a, a huge thrill. But the, the thing is just to sconce yourself uh, in a place, especially if it's raining, and just start reading a book. You know, it, it, it's a thrill. It was a very, very personal thrill. I can't remember that far, the first thing, but I remember that the thing, sometimes the thing that got you hooked was the same thing that got you hooked when you were watching serials on, uh, on the, the movie theater. Sometimes they had serials. So if the story didn't end, that would hook you because you want to know what happens. Um, but as far as like remembering the first thing, I, I can't remember because you never knew what you were going to get. You know, it was we had the Canal Zone had access to all the comic books that were being printed in the United States. Some people could go into the canal zone. My mother was one of them because she worked at Fort Clayton. So that meant that I could visit with her the, the club clubhouse in Balboa. And the clubhouse sold comic books. So they had all types of comic books. Um, but the um, trying to find, trying to remember what it was, the first comic book, I can't remember. What was the first thing? Probably was it Lone Ranger or Little Lulu or Superman. Most likely one of those three. It's the first time. My mother didn't quite encourage me to be reading comic books. She didn't mind if I did, you know, read every so often, but it wasn't like, uh, oh, here's money for comic books. Um, but I, I think that that was one of those three was the first the first time I sort of picked thing and said what is this you know and what would call you attention on it would be the covers if the covers were like attractive then you would try to you know Lone Ranger was familiar with this mask on the and the Indian and Tonto next to him and the the he had first he had a red shirt and then he had like a blue, a light blue, powder blue kind of outfit, and the horse was, you know, it's just a cover. The cover right away made you gravitate to it. So I can't remember which, which one which one was the first one I got, but I probably it was a Superman or, or a, like I said, or a Lone Ranger. As a child, I, I, I had a, there was, it was a Spanish hero called Chanok. 
that was the, the one the one that at the beginning I, I focused on Chanok. It was a Mexican uh, comic book, and his, his mentor was a Sekup, Sekup, an older guy. And the adventures of Chanok um, occurred in uh, like in the jungle, but he wasn't like a Superman. He was just a regular guy. Um, I remember that. I remember Little Lulu. I love Little Lulu. I really like Little Lulu. I thought it was very, very funny. And I, I still think it's one of the most overrated um, humor uh, uh, books. Um, uh, for some reason, I don't know why. Um, Batman was interesting because he was um, in an outfit that was like more interesting than the one that Superman had. <laughs> Superman had like a cape and whatnot. Yeah, but Batman had like a mask. And that was like really cool. Oh my God. My favorite comic book? I would say the the Hernandez Brothers, uh, Love and Rockets. I really think that what they done. I also like um, Picard. You know, American Splendor. But you know, it's interesting because I, it, as you get older, you gravitate towards uh, not not necessarily more serious, but books that are that reflect aspects of the reality that you are around, not just escapism, fantasy. You know, you can still, I mean, I can still marvel at um, Al Foster's drawings or Alex Raymond or, or, or Schoenberg's covers. You know, I, I still react to that. But um, what what the brothers did, the Hernandez brothers, uh, to create that world uh, with all those characters and, and, and make them real. And, and at the same time, posit situations and, and questions that you are still valid for you as an adult, but reflect a reality from another society group or another uh, geographical point or another social position is really interesting to me. So, because you feel that you're still learning. You're not escaping. You're not just escaping. You escape and learn as you do. So I, I'd say the, the brothers, Hernandez. When I started collecting, I went for the weirdest titles. People were not interested in a lot of these titles at the time, but they were very, very difficult to, to, to I, I, was, I was interested in completing runs. So say a run like Star Ranger, people were looking for like Amazing Spider-Man, but they were looking for other golden age titles like Superman or Batman. I was looking for things like Zip. I was looking for things like um, Funny Pages. You know, the only other person that I think that I found out much later that was doing that was John Burke. You know, and we were like looking for stuff that you just wouldn't find because nobody cared. So they weren't for sale. So every time I went to a, I remember the first book, this is so funny. The first time I went to a comic book convention was in San Diego. And it was like in the early 80s, just when it started. And I was, I was looking around, I was collecting four colors. And four colors was the one that got me into the thing full, full, full time. Uh, because I had seen a four color when I was a kid in in Panama, I had I, I had it in Spanish, and then one day I was walking in New York uh, in '74. I was walking in New York and I saw the book in English, in um, in a bookstore that was on Eighth Avenue and Fifty Seventh Street. I, I don't remember what the name of it was, and I I saw it and I went oh, and I went in. And I was scandalized at the price. I went like, my God, it was like a dollar. Yeah, I remember it, but it was not a dime. And I went like, oh. 
But I bought it anyway because, you know. And then I realized, oh, this is one of many. And when I went, oh, that's interesting. So now, oh, and they, they had like a guide. No idea that there was a, a comic book guide, really. So then, oh, so this is a whole run, four colors. So I began with the four colors. My first convention, I went to San Diego, it was in the early 80s. So I'm collecting four colors and all of a sudden, but I'm also looking at covers. Covers were always interesting to me. I didn't care who, whose cover it was. I wasn't looking for like, I wasn't a, 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 a cork sniffer. You know, I wasn't looking like, oh, perfect condition. And I just look at the cover. I didn't care what, what condition the comic was when I was completing runs and or looking at covers. I see this cover and I said, this is really neat. And it, it had a it had a, a page missing. As it turns out, Centerfold was always a lot of times missing from this particular comic book. But the, the punchline and the comic collectors will, will get a laugh at this. The first book I bought in a comic book convention was Catman 13. <laughs> and I got it for like that that one I didn't pay like a lot of money for it. I don't I don't I didn't pay that much for that book at the time, um, it, because it had a a missing centerfold. But later on, I found out when the Gerber books came out that it was a a, a blank, a missing missing cover, and then I learned it was a very uh, hard book to find. So ever since I have found more, um, but and and but. I, I, I gravitated towards books that were off, that nobody knew about, and that were very hard to find at the time because of that. Um, and most of that, most of the time, I mean, like I said, because I bought him um, Suspense 3. You know, that's a that's a very important book, no matter when. It, people were always attracted to the color and the fact that the book was not was not an easy book to find. But I can also tell you Four Favorites Five is a really tough book to find. And nobody was really following Four Favorites. Punch, nobody was collecting Punch at the time. And the, the skull cover, Punch, not everybody wants it. So, and even, even the Star Rangers, the, 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 the Star Funnies, the, um, all those, all those books that were called esoteric books, esoteric. Um, now all of a sudden, I've become more popular. There's some areas that I collected that nobody cared, and they still don't care. Which is undergrounds, for instance. Some un undergrounds crumb, for instance. But I was collecting undergrounds where nobody was collecting undergrounds, and also um, I was collecting. Um, Promotional copies. That's another thing that people don't, some people don't seem to care for. But I have a lot, I couldn't even tell you the amount of books that I think are like exciting to me, that were exciting and continue to excite me. I, I, I didn't really formally educate myself, it was just a matter of instinct. I mean, I would look at these books. And there would be a cover that would interest it, interest me, and because the cover interests me, I figured I want to pay attention to this because maybe I like the next cover. And then all of a sudden, I started asking for those books. Nobody knew what I was talking about. We go like, uh, "Do you have uh, so?" No, and so we don't say no. We don't even know what that is, you know. And I'm talking about comic book. Um, people selling. So I educated myself um, just by sheer uh, determination of finding books. And then I have to say the um, the Over Street Guide and Gerber. Gerber was very, very instrumental. It weighs a ton, but you can't carry it with you. But boy, that that is really an education because you get to you get to see what the what uh, what how odd these these um, books are in terms of their um, scarcity.
the level of uh, how scarce they are. So, yeah, but I educated myself. I mean, it was, I was like, I'm going to follow this and see where it takes me. And then I would go to places and look at any title. If it had a cover that I felt was really interesting, I grabbed independently of what it was. So my, my the collection is very weird in that sense. I, I Again, I don't, I doubt with the exception of of the Mile High. I doubt that there's any collector that collected more runs than I, complete runs than I did. I doubt it. Because I wasn't, um, my purpose was not to collect to sell or resell. It was just to have them. My idea was that one day I'm gonna have like a museum of comics and I'm gonna have like the complete run of this and and uh, and other people will see all the covers and all the titles. You know, it took me forever to uh, to collect, but um, it was very random and very nilly willy. Well, it's it's on and off um, because remember to, to buy books you need money. And when I started, I didn't have that capacity to be buying books that were over a certain amount of money. But I mean, I began collecting in the early 80s. And I wasn't, um, I mean, bef no, actually, no, that's earlier, 70s. And, this, and uh, I got here 74 in New York. So when I, when I saw that book that I went like, oh, I was working in a mail room at the time in Fania Records. And uh, Fania was located at uh, uh, 7th Avenue and 50, 50, 57th Street between 7th and Broadway. So, and this comic book place was, if I remember correctly, it was on 57th and 8th. So I was coming from lunch, I guess, something, going back to work. So that's 75. 74, but um, I really began to get involved heavily uh, as I, as I, my, my finances allowed me to, because at the time when I, when I got here, I, I had no time for anything. Also, um, the, um, the, the, in those days, the conventions were like in churches and basements and things like that. So some uh, books were some books were more accessible, especially the books that nobody cared about. So, but I think I think seventy in the seventies, uh, 74, That was a, when I began. But I really began in all earnest, I think, in the in the eighties, nineties. Oh, I just built it over. I did sell some books at one point when I was coming out of the public service in Panama because. I mean, I, I had no money when I came out of the public service. I was there for five years, and I, you know, I, I didn't, I, I didn't have, a, I didn't do movies or I didn't do any acting. I didn't do any touring or recording or anything. I just service public service. So when I got out of there, my finances were pretty hurt, and also other other things that happened to me. Um, in my personal life, uh, I had a situation, uh, two lawsuits. That I I had a lawsuit against my former um, record label, so I could return, I get my music back. I had a divorce, which is always demolishing uh, in many ways. So it was, um, you know, I, I I came back and then I sold some of the books uh, through, uh, <laughs> and uh, so. All the all the sensations were gone in that one. I remember all the kings, uh, several. But I, I I got back the sensations for some reason. I, I got the wrong again. The the chase is what you cherish the most. The the the, the completion. It's very very very. Uh, Frustrating and at the same time exciting, exhilarating to be chasing for a specific book. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. I tell my wife, you know, we're right now on the top floor, 
I tell my wife that one of the reasons that I had the books and I had uh, also, I collect soldiers, toy soldiers, and, is that when I start on the, on the bottom floor, I'm 76 years old. By the time I get to the fourth floor, I'm eight years old. And so even now, even now, I can feel I go back. And I cannot explain it. It's a sensation. You have, you have a nice feeling about life in general. I guess the same thing that music gives me, provides me. Music provides me that as well. But the, the fact that you have the books, the books have been with you, that you chase them, you looked for them. You know, it, it's, and you have them. It's not an animal that you kill that has done nothing to you. And then you, if you didn't eat it, you just hang the, wall, the head on the wall. I, I, no, it's not that feeling. The feeling of not hunt, but rather the search for something that has been with you uh, and was with you when you were younger and still is with you at this time, at this age, you know, sort of a Peter Pan kind of thing. And uh, the fact that the books is, are here still make me feel like I'm amongst friends. I mean, and, and, and people that I looked for and, and, and are here. It's tough to part with them, but I, 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 I have to. It's, it's been, it occupies a lot of space. And also, I'm on going into another phase. You know? That doesn't mean that I don't still keep an eye out for titles or keep an eye out for covers. I'm still buying books here and there, you know. But uh, as a whole, I, I hope that the people that get the collection really take care of them as much as I have and, and protect them as much as I have. The reasons now, I guess, I, and I'm very careful with the response because as an older person, I don't want to tell the young people, you know, what they're supposed to do because I didn't like that when I was young. But somebody would tell me what I'm supposed to do. I just hope they get the same amount of joy that I got from having the books, from appreciating the art of the books because some people don't understand, but this is art. And it is part of culture as well. And that they have a historical sense of what they have. But then again, I'm talking about golden age or silver, uh, silver age and or uh, uh, platinum age. Now, books, again, are, pro are providing the same type of, of joy and, and, and motivation that I had in my time. The books that I am presenting, most of them, or all of them, belong to the Golden Age period. And it's uh, I, I think that whomever gets the book, it's not just getting a book that is um, something that will give them some pleasure, um, but also they're becoming a sort of safekeepers of history. And, and a very, very important period of, 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 of society because books also at the time, especially Golden Age books, were made at a time when the when the world was at war. And books provided a, a way, not just of, of exercising uh, patriotic feelings and also opposing the forces of evil, as it were, uh, Nazism, uh, uh, it, but also at the same time provided hope and, and a way to be solidary with good, with that which is good. That's another thing that comics book had. You know, they defended the idea of good versus evil. And that we, we still need that. So I hope that whomever gets the books also understands that they, they are actually, um, they own a piece of history. And at the same time, they, are, they become the safe keepers of that piece of history. I have, like I said, you know, it's like, it's tough for me to choose because I mean, some of them are hard to find. You know, some books, like in The Amazing Mystery Funnies, 22, Amazing Man, 
comics uh, 22, I think it is. I, I, I don't know, I forget which of the two is. Amazing Man Comics 22. Almost impossible books to find. And um, so, I mean, I I got a kick out of the runs like Dynamic Comics. Great, great covers. Dynamic. Uh, Punch. Great, great com uh, covers. Uh, four favorites. Uh, Jesus. I mean, Star Rangers. Funny pages. Funny picture stories. The little giant books. Hard to find. Um, I have too many. I swear to God. I can't, I can't tell you like, well, it, Sensations, Wonder Woman, Modern, the military, uh, the those covers are like some of the best covers, I, I, I think, uh, military covers that there are there. I mean, I, the other day I was trying to make a list. Ace Comics, I mean, for me, the old time favorite would always be uh, the four colors, always. And, and why? Because four colors has everything. You have the ducks, you have Mickey Mouse, you have 77 Sunset Strip, you have tele the television, you know, Row High, you have like Dick Tracy, you have like everybody who's anybody in one run. It's, there are like 1300 books. And then I went over to, I, I started getting the books with no ads in the back because Four Colors at some point, I guess for economic reasons, they started publishing ads in the backs, uh, in the back covers. So I started, when I realized that was happening, I started then trying to make the run without the ad in the back, which I did. So, but the one I think I'll keep, they won't bury me with it, but the one I'll keep will be the four color run for sure, for sure. But I tell you right now, as I, as I talk to you, I try to remember the runs. When I gave you the list, there were a lot of books that were not that were not there. The Green Llama, I mean, those covers by Ravoy, they were just wonderful. I mean, uh, so I don't know. I couldn't tell you. That's a really interesting question because I never saw myself as a superhero. Hmm. If I were to comic book character. I think of all the books I would have probably be well, but I, I'm not English, Alfred, but I'm not English. Only because he's like um I think that he he, he was a mentor in many ways, sort of a guide for for uh, for Bruce Wayne, sort of like leading him, sort of surrogate father who kept him sort of on the right line. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that in 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 the in the in the comic, I always thought that he was sort of like um like a Jedi kind of guy. I didn't think that he was just a butler. I'd go get, go get me this offering. I don't think that he has been developed as much as he could have. And I, that, I, that, as an actor, you, you asked me, right? As an actor for me, that character that I find totally underdeveloped would be the one that would attract me more than Bruce Wayne or, or Clark Kent or any of those guys. Because that's the guy that nobody's looking at. That's the guy who's doing things that nobody's thinking he's doing. Alfred. 